Uh, so hello everybody, nice to see you again. Uh, we had a little a short uh, summer break and now we're back with uh, Voice TV uh, and with the next season of Voice TV. Uh, and tonight uh, for the beginning of this new season, uh, you will watch us uh, of course once a month, uh, some Monday in the month. Uh, and tonight uh, we're uh, opening this new season uh, with a special guest uh, uh, from Aleppo. Uh, and uh, his name is uh, Isa Tuma. Uh, he's a, a great uh, photographer, uh, curator, filmmaker. And uh, as I would like to call him, he's an art journalist also. Uh, and his work is uh, very, very interesting. Uh, and through his work, you can learn a lot about uh, uh, the life uh, in Aleppo uh, before the war, uh, during the war, and after the war. Uh, he is also a person that has been, in a way, uh, exchanging uh, the artworks and also uh, all the artists uh, from the, the East and West between the Middle East and Europe uh, particularly. Uh, he's been uh, working as a photographer for more than 20 years. Uh, he's uh, had a lot of exhibitions uh, around the world. Uh, in 1992, uh, he founded the first uh, photography gallery in the Middle East uh, called the Black and White uh, Gallery. And after it was closed uh, in 1995, uh, he opened Le Pont Gallery. Uh, which is uh, still working today and uh, where a lot of very interesting uh, things have been happening, which we will uh, talk about tonight. Uh, he is also uh, the founder of the International uh, Photography uh, Festival in Aleppo, the first uh, festival uh, like this in the region. Uh, now uh, 25,000 people are visiting uh, uh, actually this uh, festival during the year. Uh, he is also uh, the founder uh, in 1999 uh, of the International Women Art Festival and also a very, very interesting project he will be uh, talking about tonight and that is the Art Camping Project. Uh, I could talk uh, a lot much more about his work, uh, but uh, now I just want uh, to have a warm welcome uh, to Isa Tuma, uh, my dear guest. Hello, Isa. Hi, how are you, Maya? Okay, so maybe the internet will be a little slow because, of course, the internet, uh, yeah, but here is Isa. Okay, I'm happy to meet you all. Uh, I don't hear you, but uh, do you hear me? Yes, very well. I see you, but I cannot hear you. Oh, that's very strange. I, I can now. So I have no idea who is here at the moment. Uh, hmm. Hello? 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 Hello. Do you hear me now? No? Yes, yes, very well. Okay, I think I think I have to refresh.
Okay, good. Okay, Thank perfect. You. I will th Thank you. I was talking about the bad internet in Aleppo and we forgot the bad internet in Serbia. That's the issue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so sorry about that, but I actually had to also restart my internet and computer, so I have no idea uh, what was happening, but we're That's back. Okay. Yeah, so it's okay. I hope we it will work well from now on. Yeah. Okay, so Isa, I had this, uh, this short introduction, and uh, uh, welcome to our show uh, tonight. Uh, I hope you're well. How, how are things in Aleppo at the moment? Yeah. Um. Uh, life continue after the war uh, and the people like uh, just busy with rebuilding and also like uh, with the life matters so life become very expensive last year completely so uh, in the way people like become more poor of course and uh, it's really difficult uh, for them to continue in this way like uh, uh, the level of the money go down a little bit and this is make a huge problem for the public especially things who come from outside and uh, this make really like hard life for the Aleppian people in 2016 when Aleppo united they had people who had some money they start renovating they start to uh, rebuilding home and uh, there was really optimism so but now it's not anymore because uh, uh, like me even, like I start to uh, rebuild my home and now I, I'm not doing that uh, from a long, long time because I cannot continue. Things are very expensive. And and what about the situation with the pandemia there? How how did it uh, strike and how is the healthcare system there? How are you coping with that? The problem is not the rules. Uh, the government asked uh, ask people to become careful and things like that. But when you have some uh, religious background society, especially people who are over 40 years old, so it's almost impossible to tell them about the rules because they trust the God and they don't trust the law. So, uh, uh, and this kind of situation is really a big problem for, the, for everyone, you know, even it's not matter even if you income into Syria, they cannot work with the people who are trusting the God only. <laughs> this is yeah. this is big story, you know. So you can see people like very close to each other in the bakeries. We have little bit uh, bread pro uh, problem. So uh, in the in any line, you know, in any line you have, if they want to get gas, bake uh, bread, uh, rice, or anything, so you can see them very close to each other. Like when I stop in the line, I want to buy anything. So you can see behind me. I'm seriously tell to the people, no mm -hmm. one come around me. So I'm the only person who like one meter all side from around me is empty. But the rest it's all stuck to each other. <laughs> but what what about the vaccinations and the uh, and the healthcare system and uh, how this many is, people are how is the, the is the disease spreading there? How how do you cope with that at the moment? Because uh, course, there is a lot of center like last uh, few weeks it was uh, they opened many centers for um, uh, people can get uh, the corona uh, like medicine so and uh, but the numbers of the people is not big i mm -hmm. think because mm -hmm. when i go to take it months ago so i i saw 35 people 40 people only uh -huh. but okay. anyway the the system cannot deal with the big number also because 35, 40 people, uh, I think the, the small hospital where I was, so for them it was a big number. So uh -huh. they say, oh, come back tomorrow. I say, we say, okay, we are just 40 people and uh, we cannot, we can do it. So in the end, we push the doctors to finish it. So yeah. uh, it's kind of the trusting God, some lazy doctors and uh, slow system it all will make it uh, look really bad situation in Syria for this. Yeah, and also, and of course, the economic crisis that you're talking about at the moment. Yes, sure, sure. Like, uh, and there's number of the people they don't believe in Corona until now. Yeah, <laughs> they don't believe that it's happening or something happening. Like uh, I... one of my neighbors died, 
in my street. So uh, in that in that in that night we hear later it just like 53 people die from corona and it's like like something in the war we never hear in one day 53 people die in one night so it's uh, it was really like big problem and no one no one want to take it seriously from the people yes and i think uh, in middle east we have problem to follow rules and laws it's really big problem because uh, this is can come with the education it's not coming with the <laughs> with any other way and what would because of course uh, before the pandemic there were a lot much more news about the situation in the middle east and then when the global pandemic started uh, i remember that i was talking uh, what is happening with the middle east crisis nobody is talking about it i'm of course talking about the western media it was it just disappeared from the news and i know a lot of people uh, i was talking a friend just uh, another um, a couple of days ago and i told him that i'm going to do an interview with you and that i would really uh, like to come to aleppo and you also invited me which would, would be really great and then he told me oh no you cannot go there you don't know the situation uh, uh, in syria no 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 it's nothing now yeah. yeah so so i really because of the audience most of the people are not uh, completely aware what is happening can you just give us a short little introduction how is the situation now with the war in syria how is it in aleppo uh, how are you living your lives is there any culture that is happening now and uh, how much of yeah, the no. yeah just i can inform you that context, uh, yeah. i can inform you shortly this uh, as i told you it's uh, Uh, earlier that people they don't uh, believe in this uh, problem so uh, for me as gallery i stop all my activity at the gallery uh, until 2022 because i know if i make any opening no one will wear mask and everybody like maybe one or two people will come between 200 people who will come to the opening will wear mask so for me it's really big problem and i cannot uh, i cannot do that i cannot make be responsible to be anyone affected from the uh, like covid-19 and in my gallery so uh, i'm making private meeting with limited number i'm making art camping with limited number of the people like 10 20 people we know we are far from each other so that easy but you cannot control opening opening uh, because of the people until 2022 will open almost all the world i say okay i will do the big activity next year 2022 fine for me uh, situation in aleppo it's no war from december 22 2016 so it was uh, finished uh, also in almost like most of the city in aleppo except idlib and around hasake around hasake there is big problem between the kurdish and the turkish army uh, and idlib it's like big storage of the jihadists now it's all kind killers almost there sitting there so uh, fanatics uh, religious fanatics uh, strange ideas strange uh, even like we hear something we never heard it in islam before about the islam before so it's happening they are creating new religion kind of the mm -hmm. new islamic religion in that country in that part from the syria it's just one state from the syrian syria it's not the majority so now you can travel also between aleppo and damascus safe and you can go to the airport safe uh not so much checkpoint so it's fast like before uh, during the war with it take 10 to 12 hours to go Uh, the trip between Aleppo and Damascus now we can do it in four hours only for our health so it's different uh, this easy things it's really good but the problem it's um, with the like uh, uh, expensive life you know mm. so of course people who had money they go to the restaurant they do things but not uh, uh, not everybody can do that yeah still yeah. limited organization of UN working in Syria not like before sending uh, help but the uh, situation in syria it's really like going calm in, in general and what what would you say uh how is the uh, life and the society different in syria before and after the war 
uh, because at the oh, point you is... said, yeah, the war has liberated the people's minds. I know this is a sentence. Ah, yeah, from that is really from, important. Yeah, yeah, that's your... really important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will tell you something. Uh, like in Aleppo society, people over forty years old, they still dreaming to that the life one day will become better, and we should work to uh, to bring Syria uh, as before. You know, as before oh, the yeah. war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, before the war was quiet. Uh, safe and things, but it was a lot of fake society. Fake society, they was lying on each other, they was kind of the more religious society or not religious, let's say, acting as they are really believers and religious, more, many of them, because it come the religion kind of the fashion in that time. So uh, after what make the war? War is change the society, not just destroy building and countries, it destroy everything they believe. In. So this is great chance for the people to choose another choice. There's a lot of people have another ideas, another way to thinking, and they never get the chance before the war to express himself and to show what they, what they think and and to 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 talk openly to each other. What I saw today on Facebook and things incredible that girls uh, like talking about. A lot of things. They're talking about the boyfriend, talking about uh, sex, talking about the relationship openly on Facebook. And this was almost impossible before the war. And even like you can see swimming pool, wearing a swimming pool, yeah. going to swim and things like that. This is what almost. Today that the young generation in Syria going very close to the young generation in Europe. Yeah, in a very you fast way. You know, so they because these people, they grow up without pass. They don't remember the life before the war to, to, uh, to practice it. So they remember the life after the war only, during the war and after the war. So they are the generation of today and tomorrow. They are not generation of the old uh, life we had it before, the, before the war. Yeah. So people, uh, people over 40 years old, they should deal with them. And definitely they cannot fight them because they are so strong and incredibly uh, like amazing characters, uh, owners, you know. Of course, they will do a lot of mistake, this generation. Uh, let's make some example to make it understandable for the Western audience. Like uh, apart from the hippies who make the hippies movement in Europe, after when they become tired from that crazy idea, so they become like the intellectual, they become professors in universities and things like that. So I meet many of them and they were so proud that they are, they was from the hippies movement in yeah. all time, you know, so later, because, because this generation will have different experience, make him, uh, uh, war make the people grow up very fast. So yeah. also that kind of freedom in Europe. So what happened later, they become, kind of the okay enough let's do serious things they will make serious things much better than the old generation because the old generation full of compliment full of fake uh principles and fake stories yeah not That's... everybody of course not everybody of course but i can i can talk like good numbers from the society they was really like that way and i never like to come back like to the life before the war because after the war, I can see more hopes for developing the country in healthy ways. And do, do you see the, the uh, West uh, looking at the situation uh, the same way as you do? Because I know in your... No, uh, no, no, at all. Yeah, in your recent work, the notes from Aleppo, you have one uh, which, of course, uh, all the audience will be able to have the links uh, below on YouTube to see all your work. Uh, and notes from Aleppo are really a great uh, piece of work. Uh, we will talk about it a little later. But I just want yeah. to say here, uh, you said that the... Uh, there was like a Christmas uh, happening uh, in uh, Aleppo after the war and everything was coming back to normal. And there was a flag, of course, the Syrian flag. And you said that uh, a lot of Western media did not uh, react well to this. Uh, so what, what's your opinion on, on this? Yeah, of course, Western media, they don't want to say, they cannot say because 
22 of December when Aleppo united, after four days, Christmas was going on in the middle of Aleppo. So uh, when I go to photograph it to find out 80% of the people who come to the Christian celebration was Muslim people. So it's, it's just four days after. So it's no, not four days, two days after. So yeah. uh, it's incredible, that story, because uh, I, even I didn't believe that will happen, you know, because I think, oh, for sure, some fanatics, they will not come, some people, they will not come. And later I find out majority of the people, they are not fanatic at all. So they come, everybody yeah. to dance, to become happy for first happy celebration. They didn't care if it's Christian or not Christian or whatever it is, you know. So they was all with the light and things and crazy things. So I, it was a surprise for me also. So for Western media, they cannot that fast uh, accept that they lost. Because uh, the biggest problem of the Western media, they take the situation in Syria as, as pieces of a stone. It never changed, only it only is changed when they want to change it. Yeah. So it's not possible because the society was growing so fast, as I inform you about the young people. It's not just young people. All people become tired. They don't want to fight anymore, the other ideas and or other people's uh, thinking way. So uh, they, uh, Western media, they, 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 until like last week, one of the French important channel, they invite the same people who ran away from 2013 to Europe. And they was talking same stories and the same uh, way they talk in 2013 because they didn't see all this. They didn't see how all this development happening. They didn't know anything about it. One of the uh, Western media's uh, big wrong, uh, it's that they, they are not open. They should open to all sides. Yeah, and of course. This is what I, I was talking about in my in my travel last four years to more than 120 cities in Europe. I was telling, okay, do not talk to me if you don't listen to all sides. All sides have stories. And all sides, they are not follow, following political uh, leaders from any political leaders, you know? So the problem, like, like we can see, like uh, some of the, our revolutionary people, they are crazy about Erdogan. Who's Erdogan for us? They are not. They are proud with him, and and this is for me. It's very strange, you know. And uh, so, people who follow these people, they will because they are taking money from them. They will say whatever they want. These people, of course, the same happened also in Europe because they are taking some European money from some foundation, even cultural foundation, you know. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. They they make this, you know, like one of the culture foundation directors, she become very angry from me because I didn't take sight. Even we worked together like more than 15 years, but it's it's finished because they want me to take sight. And of course, to yeah. not take sight, to not take sight, it's confused them because, oh, this is dangerous. What is going to say? What is going to happen? You know, and yeah they, expect, person, yeah, they expect from you to say the things that they want to hear, you know, and uh, they want, you know, as the, as your gallery was called the black and white gallery, they want the black and white world, actually, you know. Yes, yeah, sure. And also like uh, the gallery, the, uh, the second gallery I have at Lopon, it's bridge. So also they want to make the bridge, but the yeah, bridge in the uh, way they want it, not in the way I want it. Or, for yeah, me, I, the, yeah. For me, I find that from the beginning that it's really dirty game. So I didn't want to become side in in this dirty game because uh, for me, I start to talk about only about the thing I saw by myself. That's why all my heroes in all my story they are real people, and they are acting normal way. There is no acting in in the stories. There's people who are talking to me like I'm talking to you now very free, very comfortable, sometimes scared because like the woman, we have not lost yet all the story because they are afraid they didn't know the future, what is uh, coming for them. So, but they was honest. And this is what important for me because I decide to, to, to bring the stories of the trustful people, I know them personally. So they are neighbors, they are friends, they are people, I know them. 
and I trust them and I trust what they say. And this is was the important things for me. And I think also what is important when we were talking a couple of days ago, uh, when you told me that uh, you, of course, we will now uh, start talking a little bit about your work, not a little bit, but a big bit about your work. But you were telling me that uh, uh, about the media coverages and about journalism, that you cannot uh, talk about uh, any country, Aleppo or Syria, if you have not been there in the last couple of months. And yes, you were that, saying that you, you know, uh, your coverage of Aleppo was was until 2012. Uh, then you left, and then you were in Europe, and then you came back. And uh, you told me I cannot talk about the city in the meantime because I was not there. You have to be there, and we know a lot of uh, Western media function that they look from the outside, not being there and not having an idea what's actually happening there with the normal people. Yes, that's right. And if you, uh, many times in my lectures, I say if I spend more than six months, do not believe me because <laughs> it's the, the story become like uh, Aleppo is changing in that time during that six months because war situation, life go completely like different ways and yeah. it's become short. We don't know after five minutes what's going to home. You cannot give appointment, you cannot do anything. I, I was shocked at like, to find out like many journalists, there was just 15 days during five years war in my city. They come 10 or five to 15 days to Aleppo city. And they was keep talking about the Aleppo war for five years. And this is, I cannot believe it at all that they are doing things. This is completely unprofessional. Uh, when I challenge them, how you know, they say, oh, we have trustful people. So you have trustful people have sight. So you are not telling complete story. You are telling part from the story. And you are not uh, saying to the people, the Western audience, that you are telling part from the story. You are telling this is the full story. And Western people, they are for sure, audience, they was not stupid. Because I think that's why when I was lecturing in West, it was always full hall. Because people come to hear another story. Because maybe they search, maybe they look it around. And, or maybe some friend, because I have a lot of friends in West. So maybe they advise them to come. And uh, I hear from one journalist, she, he say, he say one of the, our uh, diplomat who's with the, with the like uh, fighters who's fighting in, in Syria, to, uh, like uh, openly, but uh, she advised me, if you want to hear the other kind of story, apart from the crew, you should uh, interview Isa. So I was a little bit really like happy to hear that because uh, you, not every day you hear this kind of uh, advisor and like or this kind of story from from journalists. Yeah. Yeah. We also have a question from the audience from Beral Madra who asks you how do people react to the Turkish military presence in North Syria? Oh, that is an incredible story. Without any like looking for the site acting of the Turkish government make really like so much hate to the Turkish uh, politic in Syria from all sides almost except the side who's taking money from the Turkish army I mean Idlib so <clears throat> in general most of the Syrian you can be like I know oppositions I know people who are like pro-government I know people have no side uh, ethnics and everybody it's really really hating that and they don't know exactly the the because it's not sharp the Turkish politic what they want it's just like something like they come here and they don't know how to come out it's really amazing, incredible this story and it's it's like like pain but like it's something so hard to understand for the Syrian and definitely no one I know from any logical, he liked the country, he liked his Turkish friend, he liked, uh, he liked uh, even like uh, we have friends in Turkey, like Osman Kabbala, like Birel and everybody, you know. And that guy, he's in the jail from one year. We don't know why. Like him, 300,000. But no one can say anything to Turkey from Western media seriously. Maybe sometimes you hear some critic because yeah. he's part from the NATO. So if it's 
if if any co- a country like uh, friend of west the critic will not be serious yeah, yeah. yes <laughs> so but course. in syria i don't i never meet anyone like that uh, position of the turkish army in north syria yes i would i would really uh, talk to you about the political situation forever but i would really like to also talk about your artwork uh which is very important because it is in a way a mixture of art and politics uh also it's a mixture of photography video and media coverage i think that your work is very important because it's not only an artwork but it's uh, an evidence of what was happening uh during the war and also an evidence what is happening after the war and of course all the recent things that you are doing now uh to bring the the art back uh, into into Aleppo in a way that uh, it is supposed to happen after the war. Uh, you've done uh, three very interesting uh, uh, movies. Uh, all of them we will link below. Um, one of them, which I really liked, uh, well, both of the ones from the war I liked a lot. One is called Nine Days from My Window in Aleppo, where you were uh, experiencing... Uh, well you are trying to give us the experience of the war during the nine days you were filming uh and uh, the other one is greetings from aleppo that has this really a little bit like even humoristic uh, uh title because it uh, it's like a postcard you know uh i, I, I that's like what i was thinking about it it's like here you go westerners this is the greetings from aleppo this is the postcard what i want to tell you that is really happening here and also we will see a short clip from this movie which i liked from the end that is a little bit joking with the western media i would say yeah actually uh, it's uh, uh, when i make the nine day i get like thousands of the question in every meeting with the audience in west so uh, because nine day it's go i think more than 60 festival it show and, and take seven awards six seven awards so uh it that why it it was really like uh, it was really like uh, we should make another movie explain to the people what how is the life going so that 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 the way come greetings from aleppo uh, to the light because it's really answering every question they ask us <laughs> yeah. So I would really like now to show the uh, the first clip and it's uh, actually the end of the movie Nine Days uh, from Aleppo. Of course, yeah, uh, it's a beautiful part. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful part and I'm warmly asking the audience to look at the movie after our talk, but now we will just see the the end uh, and uh, yeah, we we will see. Good. <laughs> yeah. هي كذبة كذبة انه الثورة بلشت سلمية بكل محل بالشارع بالشارع سيد علي بلشت مع سلاح ما كانت سلمية ابدا مبين انه هيدي قصة طويلة ما عاد اصور حرب ابدا بعد هلا Are we back? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, and um, in the greetings from Aleppo, uh, there is a, a very interesting part, which I would also like to show the audience. Uh, and uh, this is the part uh, with your gallery, actually. Uh, ah, yeah, and, I remember yes. that. Yeah. And then, yeah, we can, we can look at it maybe now, and then you can say something a little bit about uh, the whole situation with the gallery during the war. Yeah. كملت طريقي ساعة خمسة بعد ظهر رح اسجل قصة احمد بالجاليري عندي انا احمد عمر بنتي ماسا من عمر الازمة كان عمرها سنة لما بلشت الحرب بحلم ماسا ما تعلمت تمشي مثل باقي الاطفال هي تعلمت ترقد وترقد على روس صبيعة للزاوية تبعيتها كل ما تسمع صوت ترقد لزاويتها مشان تحكي 
تهتمي فيا وتتخبى فيا الجاليري عندي هي نقطة لقاء بحاول دايما انه يبقى مفتوح نوحي لبعض خططنا ونشتغل سوا ما عدنا نحتفل بالميلاد وراس السنة بالأيام الأصلية بعد خمس سنين حرب صرنا نعرف انه رح يقصفوا بهالايام اكثر من باقي الايام. احتفالنا صار بين الاعياد. فرجيني قديش لميتي اليوم؟ فرجيني قديش لميتي اليوم؟ قديش لميتي؟ خليني اصوره. لا الكمية اللي لميتيها Yes. Yes. Uh, I will tell you something about greetings. The people you saw in the picture, only one person left in Aleppo. All left out to travel out, still in Aleppo. Only one person uh, still in Aleppo. From the, from rest, the party, from the party. Uh, no one, I miss them all. <laughs> yeah. So they all left or did they, I didn't understand. Yeah, they go different direction because uh -huh. of the life story. Some of them for study, some of them uh, for life, some of them for uh, to find another opportunity. So it's uh, for many, many reasons. And this, uh, this was all, uh, this uh, party that we were looking at uh, was actually happening uh, during the war. War, yes. The, you can hear bombing outside sometimes yeah. it's just like incredible because we make the music high because just to not hear it anymore but uh, it was bombing every second in that time and uh, people take risk to come to the gallery and uh, but we need to meet we need to see someone to forget about the war so the gallery was really great meeting a place for not just young people also for many generations. We create also something called a tea party. So we meet every week for drink tea, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> we make very nice collection of tea and we talk about the situation, politics, have fun, talk with intellectual artists and some other friends. Yes, yes. So it was some kind of a little refugee place where you felt... Uh, yeah, also we did like a lot of exhibition, kind of like... Uh -huh. Yeah, I get the challenge later to make also the 12th International Photo Festival, which has happened completely during the war, with 100 photographers from all around the world. So uh, we show it part, part by part uh, at the gallery because we cannot take the risk to, uh, to use our big building mm -hmm. uh, at the old city because there it was really terrible war going on. And also because uh, uh, like bomb come inside the building and destroy all my festival material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's for many reasons we cannot do it. So I, I use the gallery for show the like to around 100 uh, photographer artwork. Yes, and you, I also asked you because you now said that a lot of people from the video left uh left uh, Aleppo left and country. you you left the country and uh, you also uh, at one point were in Europe but you came back and you you didn't want to stay in Europe is there no, a but, uh, it's never past three months uh in Europe like every like few months I come back again to Aleppo uh-huh uh, sometime for shooting, sometime to make activity in my gallery. But I didn't want to close my gallery at all completely. I didn't want to stay two years or like uh, I had really long resident in Sweden, Gavle city. And there was amazing welcome from the city and municipality there. So, uh, but uh, for me, like, I don't know how, I, I don't remember how many time I go up and down because uh, almost like, Every time I want to do something, I come back to Aleppo. 
and do it, stay, do it, come later to Sweden again. From Sweden, I go to many countries in Europe. So that's why I visit like a lot of cities and talk because when I am in Europe, people, easy for them to invite me. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I would also like to see the other clip from the movie Greetings from Aleppo uh, with the, about the media coverage. Uh, and it's really, really fun. And also, yeah, you can tell us a little bit. Oh, about my God. It. Media. Yeah, but yeah, but, first, uh, maybe feast, I can first. make I can make 10 movies with yes. a lot of fun about the Western media, what they were saying and what was the reality. It's It's really... So I was always almost laughing. Is that logic? It's how they do that. You know, just like incredible. Yeah. It I in the same time it's sad because they don't know when you make fake news or it you kill people in the war zone. Yeah. Like incredible. Like British big magazine, uh, it make uh, like um, article about Aleppo and say it's Aleppo is the city of cat and the skull. And one million people was living there. Like, if you if you make that kind of article in the British important media, and uh, people will think there is no people in Aleppo left, so they will not be sorry if the if the warrior get uh, bombed the city completely. But she like ignored one million people. She like just like put X on them, and in her article, uh, show Aleppo like its city of cat and the skulls. That that not unhuman, I think, you know, and you should each one of them go to the uh, court case because uh, I think they lie without feeling any guilty. Yes, yeah, of course, we we know about that. Uh, so shall we watch this clip uh, that demonstrates yes, the really, thing you yeah. were saying? Yeah. yeah. بالشي اللي عم بيصير بالواقع أسعار الذهب اليوم في سوريا عيار 21-19-1700 ليرة سوري عيار 18-16-1886 قائد مركز تنزيق السوري المباحثات بشأن إعلان نظام التهدئة في محافظة حالة مستمرة الله أكبر كيف أنا أدفع السوق على طلبات الله ما حلب حلب تحترق البيتبورينج <تصفيق> 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 <تصفي
that you're doing now because in this project uh, all the um, uh, eyes uh, of the women were covered because uh, of course uh, you had to protect their uh, identities so uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about the project then we can see the slideshow of, of the women yeah uh, there's of course big difference between the first book and coming books uh, the first book uh, the woman inside you can see them they don't know anything about tomorrow. They was scared from the war. They was scared that the, the fanatics, they will enter the city and their life would change completely. That means no free dresses, no f even if, if the woman, she's valid, maybe she will put more things on her head and body. So she cannot go out without men. Uh, so a lot of, uh, lot of like fear. In the first book, you can see also the suffer. You can feel it from the accent. Like even 18 years girl, when she say, "Okay, I will go to the restaurant as much I can because tomorrow I don't know if I can do it." So it's uh, simple things. Uh, it's simple dreams, not big dreams, but it's uh, it's big during the war because during the war, when you wish sometime to have really clean water, you cannot get it. get that. And you should have you, you dream to have like 15 minute electricity to charge your mobile. You cannot have that. And uh, on the top of all these problems, you can have you always scared that the fanatics will cross the city and occupy it completely, and the life will come completely upside down. This is the first book. Uh, of course, the girls was incredibly strong and have courage to do this book because uh, if in case the city fall down so this is, will be so dangerous for them so but in the second book it's completely different it's about the new generation i talk about them uh, girls still have not big dreams but you can see them more trusting himself more they know what they want but maybe they cannot get it but at least they know what they want. Uh, they are strong. They don't care about the 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 man's lives more because they are. Yeah. They know that uh, it's man's control. Let's say not man's life, man's man's control. So they know exactly. Uh, they can work. They can uh, dress as they like, and they can do whatever they like. It's different. Even if they are religious uh, girls or not religious girls, they are doing what they like it exactly, not what uh, the other people want. Yes. And shall we see also uh, now a, a little slideshow of, of uh, your first book? And of course, I hope we will see your uh, next book when it gets out. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Isa, you have to unmute your mic. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, um, and we have a couple of comments I just want to read. Um, from Eva Asp, 
Thank you, Issa. So nice to see you and parts of your films again. You were such an appreciated guest as an artist at the residence during the two years in Gavle, Sweden, a few years ago. We learned so much. Yeah, she was the director of the Cultural Center, the best one. <laughs> yeah, so she is watching the show. Uh, Kelly Magir, yeah. I hope I'm pronouncing this well, says uh, solidarity to you, Isa, and your gallery and city. And Thank you. April, April Sanchez says, I'm glad to hear news of this again. Thanks. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, we come to... Um, Really, I, I was really fascinated when I uh, watched um, uh, your uh, work, Notes from Aleppo, which is actually a work you did after the war, uh, a series of story where you're dis rediscovering Aleppo after the war in 2016. It also uh, won the World Press Award in 2019. The thing I love most about it is that it is very interactive and you combined your photographs, stories and also videos. And there is a specific way. I, I watched it on my computer, not my mobile phone, but you told me that on the smartphone you have an application so you can watch the stories in the way you want, clicking and yeah. going from one story to another. Yeah. Uh, so can you tell me uh, something about this project uh, and uh, why you did it in this uh, specific way? Uh, we start this project with Paradox in Netherlands. Um, and uh, because during the war, I have really a lot of material in my laptops with the, a lot of image and things. And all can be stories and movie. But to make movies every month, it was too much. So I think it was the best way to make it in this way. Yeah. So you can you can make it more and more story in the future. So uh, it's come out and I didn't know that I will get a word of the WordPress photo. So when I go to the WordPress photo, one of the Australian famous journalists, he tell me, okay, uh, all the people you critiqued in your lectures are around you today, be careful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he would, Everybody, that's why I explain how they was looking to me, uh, some of the audience, not everybody. Of course, WordPress make amazing welcome and uh, everything was really good uh, celebration and everything, I enjoyed it a lot. But uh, at the beginning when I entered inside uh, the hall and welcoming, first welcome just for the journalist and everybody, I saw some people look at to me a strange way because that's why maybe some of the journalists, I critic them, but I don't know how they look. So <laughs> in many, many of the lectures. So uh, that Australian guy, he was really amazing. And uh, he was explaining to me what is going on. That means they was talking behind me in some way. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But I was happy that, that uh, they can at least uh, by force, let's say, not by, because they don't, uh, they hear another opinion. So not by nice way, because I was so active in my uh, lectures and travels in the way I did more than any intellectual can do it maybe in 10 years lectures, <laughs> not lectures number. Yeah. It was really big. Yeah. Yeah. So and I think I'm... they hear a lot about, about what is going on and what talk, what I'm talking about. Yes, and I think that uh, people should see this because uh, they will really get uh, a sense uh, of what happened uh, after the war and how the rebuilding started. And it also says a lot about art and culture in, uh, in Aleppo after the war. And uh, the episodes are great with, with uh, the, the people and all the stories of the people that you're talking about. Specific stories and the whole situation through this really intimate uh i would say lens yeah i think some of the stories it uh, no one uh, hear about like uh, also the baron hotel when they in entire like german media they say that completely destroy and in my stories you can see it it's come after the war it's still there and uh, the owner still she's there talking about <laughs> yes yeah. they have economic problem but no one destroyed the hotel. She was surprised when I tell her in the media, they say it's completely gone. And yeah, yeah. Uh, like some of the artists who had the pictures of the hotel, they sell it, the pictures with a lot of money because this is the only thing left from the hotel which get destroyed. 
And so it's, it's yeah, yeah. it was really like uh, incredible uh, development in wrong way. But uh, I think because also something helped me because I'm in uh, in direct contact with West a lot, like a lot of Western uh, talk to me and ask me questions and things like that. So I compared our conversation with the things happening in Aleppo. So that's why I can know I'm always, I have fresh information, what I see it in Aleppo in, with my eyes and what I hear it going on in in the Western country. So yes. also I read a lot of international magazines. So that is keep me in the, in in contact what is going on in, in, in general, in which direction going the information. So um, all this, I, I think uh, I, that's why I think it was much better messengers or let's say with the gallery name Lopon, the bridge, Lupon, yeah, much better yeah. bridge uh, between here and Western country. And so um, what bridge are you going to build uh, in the future? What what are your new works? Because you have this project called uh, Art Camping, which is very active, uh, where you are inviting uh, artists from Europe to come to Aleppo and you're making this kind of um, artistic uh, exchange. Uh, uh, between the Middle East and uh, and Europe and other parts of the world. And also, you can tell us a little bit about that and also about some of your future projects that we would uh, love to see in the future. Um, I can tell you something. I don't, uh, I don't plan for long distance because, um, because um, I always like uh, work for today. Most uh, most of the time, because I try to understand, I try to see what is going on, and uh, for the future, of course, I have a lot of uh, things to do, like uh, the coming Women Art uh, uh, Festival book, Women Art, uh, Women We Have Not Lost uh, book, under the name uh, Freedom of Choice. So um, it will be also two movies coming out. It's really beautiful. One of them, the life of the three young people, two girls, one boy. And uh, they make a strong choice and really revolutionary choice for their life. So there was uh, three of them. There was from really religious background, religious society. And uh, after that, they have another choice in their life. So they didn't hide it. They didn't make it slowly things. They, they just choose and fight for what they believe it, the new belief. So um, uh, you will see it. I will not talk about that uh, so much, but because you will see it. But in general, maybe I can say something about what I do here. What I do here, it's um, like, I believe strongly in the power of art and culture. And this is important for me. Uh, like, I think art and culture can change a lot in the society and my work, in my work, I try to show that. I try to show that many people in the books and after the books and also the project I have it, they get opportunity, uh, they was happy also to get opportunity that other people hear them. And this is important point. Uh, imagine if we do that very large project in the future and make this happen with larger audience, like big audience, big lot of people, because as I say earlier, that the, the war is not just destroy the country and the building, it's destroy the society. So let's make a big question. We, as artists, we cannot stop the war machine because the political around the world, when they want to make war in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, we, whatever we do, we demonstrate, we say no to the war, we cannot stop it. But after the war, they get tired, they sell weapons, so they go to their country without care what happened to the people there. This is how here come the important work of the artist. And that is what I'm trying to do here, like to be example in a small level. But we have a lot to do for the society because the society, when they stop believing uh, about the uh, 
the system before the war, they start to search about the new way of the thinking, new way of the living. So they can easily go like uh, get control from the fanatics again. They are not fanatic now, but in long distance, they will be controlled by them. When you see United States and Western uh, country like spending billions, like 800 billions, when I hear about Afghanistan, I was sick. I said, okay, how much get the artist in entire Europe and Middle East? One billion? No, of course not. It's just like a few million maybe euros, you know, something like that. So imagine to use 800 millions in Syria, Iraq, and uh, Afghanistan for culture and art. Really, we will have science and intellectual. We will make everybody English and we will make everybody like uh, very nice and following the law, uh, uh, the law and putting max for corona, uh, coronavirus. So using masks in the everywhere. So it's incredible. It's how much will cost. If you make simple project like, okay, if every young person from the new generation read two books from international writers or local writers, important writers who are really important for the uh, cultural life in the in the world, two books and you get uh, hundred you uh, hundred dollar. Will not. We will have three new countries, Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan, with the new generation, because half of these readers will affect from the ideas, and they will read something far from the religious, and they will change the society because they open their mind. How much will cost that? Maybe not even one billion. I hear, I become really angry when I hear the budget they use it for war, and the budget they, they give it for artists and, and everybody. European country for COVID-19, they give between 800 to 3,500 euro, like for the artists for living, not every country, some countries only. What can make that money? But they have billions for war. Yes. That's... Okay, let's let's tell them, you, you, want, you cannot stop you, you want to earn money from the weapons, do that, even against that. But let's make something after the war, correct that, <laughs> to correct yeah. that. It's incredible. Culture and art is really important in a way. I don't understand how they ignore. And this is my work I, here. And this is what I'm doing now. And this is what I think even like even 10, 15 people, they get involved and they can do something and they can say and whatever they want and we can make the people hear them. That's very important. Even I cannot pay anything for everybody, anybody because I don't have budget. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank, I don't thank know you. if I explain so, it right way. Yeah. No, you completely, you completely explained. And I think this is a great message to uh, to end our talk tonight because I'm 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 completely with you on this that. Uh, uh, the world would look completely different if uh, we would spend money on uh, uh, things like arts, culture, like education, like the healthcare system, uh, and uh, of course the environment, ecology, and uh, not uh, guns, uh, wars, uh, and uh, and global capitalism as it is. Uh, so thank you, Isa, so much for for being uh, our guest tonight. It was really, really a big pleasure uh, talking to you. Um, and I also am really looking forward to seeing your uh, next work. Uh, and we also have people here that say that uh, they're really waiting for the new stories about the communities in Aleppo, that uh, the notes uh, from Aleppo is too long ago. So uh, we hope we will have some more notes from Aleppo uh, from you uh, and uh, hope to see you in Aleppo also. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Be Everybody yes. welcome. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yes. I, think, uh, I think it's the right time to visit it because, uh, of course, part from the city destroyed, but still so beautiful because yes. uh, it's too much to see. Thank you.
Thank, thank you, you, Issa, so much. Thank you for thank inviting you. me. Thank you. Bye.